Hey gang, this is Rocky Horner, and I wanted to come and discuss a few particular markets that could shed some light on what's happening to the risk environment right now. And whether you are a futures trader, whether you are a Forex trader, this is going to impact what's happening in terms of what we've relied upon, which has been fairly consistent risk appetite. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is pressure on the dollar, even though the dollar is in a chop, we'll take a look at that in a moment, and the continual push higher, or at least support, the higher lows that we've seen in equities. Here we have the YM futures contract. I can also take a look at the Dow. And again, you can see the continual climb higher. Now, what's happening? Whether you look at the YM, whether you look at the Dow, what's happening is we're not necessarily pressing to higher highs. And what we have in place right now, and it doesn't look that dramatic yet. Here's a 13,288 high, and I also want to respect the 133 area. So 13,288 to 133. Now, unless we can continue to push to higher highs, really establish some support in 133, the uptrend is likely to be under pressure and could begin to transition out of the markup and into a sideways chop. Now this would be very much a situation where we could see at least the US dollar index start to rally up higher within its range. Okay, this is just a choppy range we've got here in the US dollar. We could see this market start to rally up within its range and therefore the stance that we've had, which is basically a flat to just chop US dollar as we've seen the risk appetite in the market, that's allowed pairs like, and let's bring these into focus here, like the Aussie yen to continue up higher, like the Euro yen to continue up higher, like the dollar yen to continue up higher. That's even helped at, at the current view, it's even helped the Euro US dollar get to the highs of its range. So we have to ask ourselves what could shift the risk environment? And this is something that I think I wouldn't have talked about this emphatically last week. Okay, so if you're looking at the ES, for example, we can see a push to higher highs here. Okay, so some of you might be saying, well, Rocky, what are you talking about? The ES is pushing to higher highs. We're above 1400. And that's very true. No question about it. But I use the Dow as a, a more psychologically relevant, a more psychologically powerful look at what's happening in equity. So I'm going to have to see the Dow get up above 13.2 again on the YM futures contract. And if we're talking about the industrial average, I'm talking about getting up in that 13.3 area. Without the higher highs here, we could start to transition to the chop. And that would change the sentiment of the market and could begin a little bit. I'm getting, maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I want to have this potential scenario at least drawn out here. We could see maybe some capitulation at this point. Again, we have, we have just a glimpse of what could be exhaustion here. Just a glimpse. Okay, I'm not saying the market's done with the uptrend. It's absolutely not. But with the heights we've reached and, and the way that we've gotten up here, if we do start to see weakness, it could be sharp, which is why I don't know that we're going to have the luxury of a lot of time to look at the market change its mood and transition out of the uptrend, it could be a relatively sharp reversal. So I want to have these potential scenarios in my mind. In the meanwhile, I certainly will continue to look for support. In fact, last week, part of my, my setups were very much reliant on the fact that this pullback here in the Dow, okay, whether I look at the, the actual average or whether I look at the futures, but that pullback was going to allow me to see the follow through on the Aussie yen, even though it was very weak. See the follow through that we're seeing right now on the Aussie yen. See the follow through on the Euro yen from the 20 period simple correction. For those of you that are familiar with my swing entries, you know that's an aggro or aggressive swing buy trigger. And then heading on over to the dollar yen, again, another aggro or aggressive swing buy trigger here. So in terms of what the underlying psychology was, one, I have the uptrend on every one of these daily time frames. So the directional bias most certainly is bullish. 
But secondarily, and, and probably the justification for being patient, even with a very sharp pullback, for example, here on the Aussie yen, was the fact that the Dow was in an uptrend and was trying to make its way back above the 20 period simple, which made me confident about the risk appetite coming back into the market and carrying this pair higher. But this pair's chop, notice the, the transition in the market. And this is not just any pair. This is in many ways the kind of barometer for, for, for risk. Notice how we're starting to go a little bit shallower and shallower on this pair. We're really starting to lose some of the 12 to 2 o'clock angle. Really, I, I, uh, the uptrend is losing its mojo and arguably entering a period of chop. Now this could be a prelude to the chop we could start to see on the Dow. So that's why I'm just preparing myself for this reality that Aussie Yen is part of that conversation. The lack of higher highs and any kind of footing above 13.3 on the Dow is part of that conversation. So that's where I'm just being cautious. And when I'm looking at my pairs, there, there are very few daily time frames that are maintaining a, a, a trend right now. You know, I can see that the Aussie's trying to roll over. And, and one of the setups that we triggered yesterday, and I talked about this in the Forex AM updates and in the Forex Extra Hour back at the TradeForexFutures.com site, was the short sell here on the Aussie. I laid this one out uh, last night and also earlier in the morning. So this is a trade that is capitalizing on the fresh downtrend. This is arguably the very first swing short for this fresh downtrend in the Aussie. Another pair that we've been talking about very consistently has been the Aussie CAD. In fact, when we first talked about this swing short, the pair was actually trading down here. Where for me to tell a trader, hey, hang on and wait till we get a 20 period simple or a 34 EMA correction and then get short, it sounds almost too much to have to wait for, right? When we see so much bearish sentiment and momentum. But alas, here we are. And right now, the downside hurdle after reaching the resistance of the 20 period simple and of the 34 EMA low, the downside hurdle is the 200 period simple moving average or the 200 DMA. So these are all setups that are following through based on, in, in my mind, um, some of the underlying trend of the market itself, which the clarity is always first and foremost but I've got to come full circle to the conversation that we started this video off with, which is, am I going to see a transition in the risk environment based upon some fatigue here and then maybe a transition into a sideways chop in equities? Because that is absolutely going to help the dollar index start to trade up towards its range highs and maybe make a run at 80. So there's a lot of maybes here. So what you see, I'm kind of spelling out some, some overall views of the, the market based on just really, again, the, the market's hesitancy to really stick its neck out, especially in the Dow. But as you notice, I've got all these d different scenarios. And whether or not they actually come true, whether they actually become a reality, what I want to be able to recognize are the signs that we're heading in that direction. So we're kind of role playing in a way here. You know, what happens if? What happens if? And, and in my mind, I'm actually imagining what it's going to look like. That way, when it does actually start to happen, I've already got a game plan ready for it, whether it be a written plan, whether it be a plan for just some lines and levels that I'd like to engage the market at. I'm ready to act when I see that scenario become a reality. And it's really important to have bullish and bearish scenarios because we don't know what's going to happen. We want to make sure that we recognize the signs that one of our many scenarios could be becoming a reality. So what I hope that you'll recognize is how important it is to have these scenarios. I talk about these each and every morning during the four extra hour and back at tradeforexfutures.com. And if you want to learn more about how I do this, I'm actually doing a free webinar tonight at tradeforexfutures.com. 8 p.m. tonight, Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to call I, it's my favorite Forex setups. And we all have different setups, but everything starts with beginning that market trend, that market psychology, which is a lot of what we've talked about here during this video. So come join me tonight 
And again, the, the whole point of this is to be able to have these scenarios actionable, have a, have a trading plan built on where we think the market could be taking us in terms of shifts and accelerations of the current trends. You know, a shift would be a good example with that fresh transition on the Aussie yen. Maybe a shift would be that move we're seeing potentially on the on the Dow. Acceleration would be the way the Aussie cat is following through. I'll talk about all these setups and more tonight, so I hope to see you there at 8.